I, no, 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 no. I love this player, though. And, yeah. and so if they felt like he was best available at this spot, I love him. This is a guy who will fly up and stick you. He'll hit you. He's good blitzing off the edge. You know, he's not necessarily great out in space as a coverage player, but he's actually pretty good at man-to-man coverage. So, you know, look, I think the more people watch this game, the more people actually love what he brings to the game. Darnell Savage was the second player taken by the Green Bay Packers in the first round of the 2019 NFL Draft, going in at pick 21, and Savage was a day one starter on the defensive side of the ball. After recording 55 total tackles, a tackle for loss, five pass defenses, and two interceptions after playing in 14 games, Lots of Packers fans think Savage will be a future stud at the safety position, and I can't help but tend to agree with them. Either way, let's dive into his tape and try to figure out why he was able to be so effective in his rookie year. So here we have Savage's first game in the NFL Week 1 against the Bears, and something that appealed to the Packers in Savage's game was his ball skills and his instincts. In 2018, the Packers just had seven interceptions as a team, which was obviously one of the lowest totals in the league. So drafting a rangy, heady, instinctive player like Savage in the first round fit exactly what the Packers wanted to do on defense. And that is demonstrated well on this play here. The Packers are lined up in a cover six, and the Bears are going to try to get the ball to Allen Robinson, who's going to run a soft curl, where he's just trying to find the dead space in between the linebacker Blake Martinez and Savage the safety, and he's going to just sit in that zone. Savage's responsibility is to be the deep middle of the field and keep everyone in front of him and not let anyone pass. After the ball is snapped, however, Savage starts to diagnose this play. He realizes no one is going to get behind him since, in fact, all three of these Bears receivers are running these soft curls, and there are no deep routes on this pattern. Savage keeps closer to a receiver, but not too close as to bait Trubisky to make this throw, and then drives hard on the ball once the ball is thrown. Savage, in actuality, is abandoning his assignment. But since he knows there aren't any deep routes, he says to himself, hey, I have the opportunity to make a play on this ball, and he does exactly he that here, and he almost picks it off. Next up, we have another one of these instinct plays the next week against the Vikings week two, and Savage is again in the middle of the field playing this zone. Vikings are going to have this receiver drag over the middle of the field and once the ball is snapped these linebackers drop back into coverage so Cousins has to make an above average throw to fit this ball in and don't get me wrong Cousins can absolutely make this throw but look at Savage here before Cousins even starts his throwing motion Savage has already started to break on this ball and I don't care who you have at quarterback it's never going to end well if you have a defender breaking on the throw you're going to make before you even start started to make it and lo and behold Savage drives on this ball pops it up in the air and it's intercepted by Preston Smith that's what you see a lot with Savage and I think he plays his best when he's allowed to be heady and instinctive and aggressive he reminds me a lot of what cover three press corners do at their position when they're just allowed to to be instinctive and aggressive and track the ball and you see that a lot with Savage in his game Savage has such a fast processor and you can see that here on this play where Savage is in the middle of the field and the Packers are lined up in a cover three zone. So Savage, especially on a run or a screen pass, the second of which the Redskins are going to run on this play here, shouldn't even be close to this play. Um, but here again, we see Savage reacting to this play already, and with his physical traits and his acceleration mainly here, he's able to get to the Redskins running back way before a safety normally would on a play like this. For our last play here, we have another play against the Vikings Week 2, and Savage is here in the middle of the field in a cover 3 zone, so Savage's responsibility is in the middle third of the field, and the Vikings are going to send Thielen on this deep post route. 
which may be an option route wherein Thielen is going to cut this route sharper and flatten it out to more of a deep dig if Savage flips his hips, or he's going to carry it over the top and let it develop as a deeper post and Cousins is going to have to put the ball over his shoulder if Savage stays put and stacks kind of on the hip of Thielen and and, and follows him throughout his zone. Uh, once the ball is snapped, we see Savage flips his hips, which is kind of a mistake by Savage, as now he has to uh, he has to choose between either keeping his eyes on Thielen and, and fully center point turn, which means he's basically just going to flip his hips and turn all the way around uh, and lose track of the ball. Uh, or he's going to keep looking at the ball and in turn looking at Cousins and watching to his eyes and risk uh, letting go of Thielen in his vision and Thielen eventually crossing his face and getting deep. So Savage decides to track Thielen instead of the ball, and which turns out to be uh, the best option uh, since uh, Cousins makes this throw late, and if he didn't follow Thielen, all the way across, uh, he surely would have beaten him deep. But no, Savage flips his hip all the way around and tracks uh, Thielen all the way across this route and uh, benefits from a late throw from Cousins um, to make this to make a play. Uh, this would have been an interception if Thielen hadn't uh, committed a offensive pass interference on this play. Even even in a pinch, you can see. Uh, when it seems like there's no win for Savage, um, in which case he had to had to choose either you lose track of, of Cousins throwing the ball, which is bad, or you lose track of your receiver, which may be even worse. So even in a in a pinch, when it seems like you really can't make a, a good play here, you're you're beat. Uh, Savage uh, can still make something out of nothing, and uh, nearly made. A lot of something out of nothing, mainly an interception, uh, which could have even turned this game even more. Savage had his fair share of uh, rookie mistakes, and he did miss a couple of games to injury. But if he can stay healthy and continue to develop like corners and safeties usually do, which it takes it usually takes a couple years, uh, guys like Jalen Ramsey, uh, Kevin King, you know, a lot of good corners uh, usually take. A couple years to really settle in to what they want to do and safeties too. Uh, Jamal Adams kind of had that. Uh, Earl Thomas had that a little bit even though Earl Thomas was really good as a rookie but that's besides the point. He wasn't elite like he was like he is now. It usually it takes a little bit for these these young guys to uh, diagnose you know route concepts you know realize what offenses are trying to do. He has all the physical talent in the world, Savage does, um, and if his tape has told me anything, uh, he will take that second step and uh, quite possibly become a future stud in this league. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, think about subscribing, uh, leave a comment with uh, players who you'd like me to see uh, breakdown in uh, teams or whatnot you want me to talk about. Again, uh, I thank you guys for watching this far and making it this far. And I, uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.